Hey friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. Today I'm gonna to tell you about this skirt you can't even see that I'm wearing. It's the, I'm gonna try this hard, Coquelicot skirt from Wildflower Designs. It is a word in French that means poppy and French is not one of the languages that I speak and I know English doesn't have a lot of room to talk, but it seems like there's so many extra letters for it just to say Coquelicot. But I think I said it right, I YouTubed it earlier. You know, there are some projects that you start after midnight on a Saturday night and you are finished and wearing it to church on Sunday morning. That's the case of this singular azalea top that I'm wearing right now. It's made out of silk um, jersey fabric from Kelly Fabrics. It is so luxurious. It was really easy to work with. I was kind of scared, uh, but I set my uh, iron really low and went with it. Um, last night, after midnight, I'd already worked out the pattern layout in Affinity Designer months ago, and I decided I was absolutely going to go for it. My machines were all threaded up, and so I cut it out and sewed it up, and I was up way too late, but even so, my brain was functioning well enough to get this um, top done, and it looks super complicated, but it's really not. If I can do it after midnight, you can do it. Another thing I'm wearing, which you might see a little bit of if I show you how the skirt work goes together, are the Apostrophe My Fit riding tights. And I made those a while back uh, specifically to wear underskirts. I have three kids, it's kind of windy, and I prefer to avoid those, shall we say, Marilyn Monroe moments. And so, some shorts to wear underneath my skirts or dresses, especially ones that are as full as this one and can blow quite easily. It's just a really easy thing to do to give myself a little insurance. They're made of a rayon, jersey from Serge Fabric Shop and I will link all those fabrics in the description box and all the patterns as well. Where you can also find the Coquelico skirt from Wildflower Designs and that is what this video is going to be about. That is the skirt that I finished last night and had been working on for a lot longer than just a few hours after midnight. There is nothing inherently complicated about this skirt. You can definitely do it, but give yourself plenty of time because there are quite a lot of steps, um, but it was so worth it. I am in love with this skirt. I first saw it on Instagram many months ago and began following Wildflower Designs on Instagram and thought it was such a cute idea, but kept putting it off and kept putting it off. And then I saw a video that Shannon Makes did. I'll link that in the description box as well. Uh, where she went through making this pattern and sort of did a pattern review of it, which is basically what I'm doing today, uh, which is a departure for this channel. I've never done a pattern review before, but as I do it, I am definitely going to do something a little different than the other videos you may have seen because I'm gonna talk specifically about how I used my projector for this. I'll also talk about what I love about this skirt, what I would change about it, all those things, but I know a lot of the people on my channel are really just here for the projector talk, so we'll make sure we get that in there. Okay, so here you can see the skirt in all of its glory. The pockets are huge. In fact, I'm gonna show them to you. So the front and back of this skirt are totally split. You put it on by lacing up the front of the back skirt. Uh, one of the mods that I did was I put a was I put a snap here on the lacing panel, which I put the opposite of here on my skirt on the inner waistband, just below where the waistband uh, hits. That way I can snap it together, lace up my front. I like to lace it from the top to bottom and tie it at the bottom. I feel like it gives just a little less bulk right where I've got a lot of bulk, and. Here you can see how giant the pockets are. I did a video outside earlier where I will sh pop in here and show you all the things I could fit in my pocket. All right, I want you to see what I look like. Now watch what I take out of my pockets. Let's see here. Hand sanitizer, glasses case, a whole big bunch of dander keys, phone, lipstick, and chapstick. And if you'll notice, it was hardly noticeable before versus after. These pockets hold so much. I probably could have even put more in there. And the front skirt 
goes over the front, obviously, and it ties around the back. And I intentionally made one long and one short um, tie so that I could have different arrangements for tying the skirt. But in the end, I have discovered that this is really the only way I prefer to tie it, just in the back. And so since I have one long and one shir short, I've been doing a one-eared bunny bow. My size fell directly between the 14, 16, and 18, 20 sizes. I think that's right. We'll double check in a minute. Because of that, I went ahead and made the bigger size. Seemed the more prudent thing to do, especially with how adjustable this skirt is. Um, I think next time, if I make this again, I will make the back waistband at least the size smaller uh, because there is so little space between my laces and my lacing panel. Um, and I think there probably should be a little bit of space there. I think it would also make my side seams line up just a little bit better because they line up a little far forward. And I think that might also mean that I need to make the front waistband the size bigger, um, which makes sense for the way my body is proportioned. I, I at my back, right at my waist at my back, I'm not, th there's not as much um, of my circumference as at the front. So I think that might make more sense next time I make it. I also saw a mod on Instagram, which I can put in the description box, where the maker pleated instead of gathering. And I love the way that looks. I think she also made her pockets a little bit bigger, which I might have to go for too, just because it's so much fun to have these huge pockets. I also did the, the hem with a facing, just like the instructions um, suggest. I used bias cut fabric um, that I originally bought as a quilt backing. It's very, very colorful, um, and I kind of figured it would involve any color I might wear with the skirt without being in your face or anything like that, because it's on the inside of the hem and you only catch little glimpses of it. I did not shape it beforehand, which I do regret because there ended up being quite a few kind of pleats in it um, as I was sewing up. But that's the reason that you use a facing rather than turning the hem, right? Because with a huge circle skirt like this, turning the hem would not look pretty in the ends. Another option I almost went with that I think would work really nice would be a rolled hem, but I didn't go for that. The fabric that this skirt is made out of is actually a queen size top sheet that I bought on Amazon. It's made out of linen, it's 100% linen. It's now $60 whenever I looked for this video. So definitely watch out for a sale if you are wanting to buy similar linen. But buying a queen size sheet, as crazy as that sounds, worked out perfectly for this. I had very little left over. And you'll see why when we get to the Affinity Designer in a little bit. This pattern just takes a lot. And I did make the short version. Uh, I am, as you all know, quite short. So um, I'm four foot 11, and this is the shortened version of the skirt with just a little bit cut off, cut off around the hem to even it up. If you followed me on Instagram, you saw the trials of that. The hem was not level whenever I was done. And so um, to remedy that, I was planning to use a marking tool on a yardstick to mark the bottom and then I realized it is so full down here at the bottom I'd be missing so many spots that I didn't think it would work out. Luckily my grandmother lives just down the road and she had about 45 minutes to help me. It took almost all 45 minutes but she pinned up a level hem for me. It was about 17 inches from the ground. By the time all of this got done it's closer to 18 inches from the ground uh, just because of the hem but that is my finished hem and it is now mostly level around and if it is not, that's on me because um, as I said, I'm not always the most precise. And by the time this skirt was nearing the finish line, I was ready for it to be done. Um, it just felt like it took forever to get this skirt done. But I was finally able to sit down and start sewing on it and the construction itself is pretty straightforward. And I'll do a little bit of close-up video on what the inside looks like. 
um, when I can lay it out flat and show you that and you'll understand a little bit better why the construction is so involved. None of it is complicated. If you can sew a straight line, you can make this. The things that come into play are just how many steps that it is. So, in the end though, I was left with this amazing skirt that has such good swish and twirl factor. It has ginormous pockets that I love. It is really, really comfortable, even though it is kind of bulky because it's a lot of fabric. It's linen and it breathes beautifully. And I had no problem being outside uh, earlier. Even in the bright, bright sunshine, which I'm sure you'll be able to see from the pictures. It's a sunny, sunny day today. Let's get into a little bit more of the projector side of things. Let's start by talking about the two different views that you could have for this skirt. So there's one view that is a little bit more simple. It has fewer panels. I believe only four total and it doesn't it uses d-rings instead of the uh, lacing panel and then there's view b which uses eight panels of skirt and the lacing panel you can see that in a little more detail here there's view a it does still have an inner pocket and waistband it's still a split skirt but it's just a little bit different and then view b has this inner lacing panel which is so cool and this is telling you the coquelicot skirt is because of a poppy it's really interesting um background information w shannon makes actually had more than one video about this skirt and one of them she was interviewing the designer and hearing all of her inspiration for this maybe it was only one video i don't know i'll link however many it was in the description box but it was very cool to hear about the way that she went for an adjustable waistband and it had to do with kind of maternity skirts from the 40s and 50s. But then there's also the 18th century pockets and just um, the way that they had split skirts, you know, for a long time in history. So it's really cool. And I um, really enjoyed hearing that and I enjoyed making this history inspired skirt. Uh, you can also see that the view A is a little bit easier than view B. I'm not sure that it's necessarily easier. It's just fewer steps. You can also see how the waistband is intended to be a little bit further apart than mine was. And it is intended to be done with the lacing loops like I used. However, I saw somebody do a... Um, slight variation where they put grommets here instead of lacing loops here, which I think is another way just to make it a little bit more sleek and a little bit um, more sturdy because I have noticed that one of my lacing loops is already looking a little bit not so pretty. This is the pattern that I cut from and you can see that I knew I was cutting on gray so I used this neon orange as my um, lines and I put black as my background. I always have my little check, um, calibration check, and I went with a 20 by 30 box this time and I just marked it to remind myself. I also was making notes as I was going about what I intended to do and what I had done. And so now I knew that this was ready to go um, once I read this. When I show you the details of the skirt, I will tell you um, that I messed up and really only needed one of the inner waistband and lacing panel to be interfaced. Um, but especially with the lacing panel, I'm kind of glad that I double interfaced it. And I might go ahead and just do that again next time, at least with the lacing panel, maybe not with the inner waistband. It does make it very stiff. And this linen is not very stiff on its own. so. You know, it was good to have the stiffening. Whenever I made these pieces for the interfacing, I used the piece as given, but I took off the seam allowance. That way it could be just a little bit less bulky in the seam allowances. And that worked out really well. So you can see there are, here, let me zoom out a little bit more. There are just so many pieces. This outline here is a queen size sheet and I barely fit it all in. 
I did leave the um, kind of doubled over top of the sheet uh, as not a part of this. But that only lost me a few inches. And this man took everything that I had. And I did not, uh, other than cutting one of the ties in half, I used every single bit of this. And I have a few followers who are pattern Tetris queens. And I would love to know if any of you think you can get more out of that. Because, man, that was rough. I did make it all fit. Obviously, placed the skirts first. Let's go over to if I need a designer. When I went to do this, I obviously placed the skirts first because those take up so much space. And then I sort of worked everything else in around it. I started with the biggest pieces, which were these inner waistbands, and then the ties. And then I worked down to the smaller pieces. I saved the pockets for last because I knew push come to shove, I could make the pockets in a different fabric, especially the pocket back would not show at all. Um, and I also did the same thing with the lacing panels because I figured of all the things, those things could be some other fabric. But in the end, I made it all fit. Phew, barely. <laughs> I also, when I did this, made myself a note such as measurements for the ruler. I, I wrote the measurements for any rectangular pieces within the piece itself. And I went ahead and made sure that everything was going to be really easy to see when I was projecting it onto the dark fabric. So this is exactly how the pattern was that I um, projected. And then over here, after I finished it, I went ahead and made myself a few little notes that I would be doing differently next time. And I wrote needed there so that would keep it in my brain. Oh look, I didn't spell waistband correctly. Um, so it would keep it in my brain and I would be able to remember next time what I might want to do differently. You can also see that my artboard is this white on the outside. So what I did was I worked on all of this whole thing with just the artboard and here, let's, let's go through that. These are all of the things that kind of come with this pattern. There is a projector file already. So even though it's a projector file already, I ran it through PDF Stitcher. That way I could reduce it down just to the size that I needed. I could make sure my lines were thick and I could make sure they were solid before I went into Affinity Designer because we definitely uh, want to make sure that we are not dealing with segmented lines or really skinny lines when we're in Affinity Designer. You can thicken them in Affinity Designer. It's just so much easier to let PDF Stitcher do it for you. So I went ahead and did that. I opened a new file in Affinity Designer and I've made myself a little preset that is 42 by 30 inches of a projector file. And I did that because that's literally how big my mat is. But I can also always change that if I need to, such as for this one, I would need a much bigger one. Started a new file here and then I also opened, I also opened this file in Affinity Designer. This is the pattern that is only the size that I need. And I, uh, it was already kind of an orange color in the pattern, um, which I ended up keeping and slightly altering to make it work really well for me um, onto my dark fabric. So I went ahead and turned off the grid so I didn't have to look at that. And um, I, started by grouping my patterns and um, I knew I would need the shorter version and so going ahead and, and shortening it there did all of those things um, as you can see there's a lot of pieces that are not there that you have to mirror to make which is fine so once I got all my pieces grouped I just started copying and pasting over into a new file and so once I did that I had them all over in my new file and I made sure that I had enough of them. So, you know, I was going to need four of this skirt and four of this skirt. I went ahead and made sure I had four over here. And that sort of gave me an idea what I was working with. And then I made myself the rectangle that was the size of my sheet. And I started placing, I started placing the um, pattern pieces within that. And I paid attention to grain line and made sure that things were the way that I wanted them to be uh, as far as grain line and everything else. This
So once I got all of that done, I realized that this orange color would actually be really nice to see on my projector, but that I wanted it to be really distinct from my background. And so I just took the sheet that I had made and I made it a black color. And then I had to go through and fix all of my lettering so that it was correct. And then I ended up modifying the color to be just a little, oops. I ended up modifying the color to be just a little um, brighter somehow. And I don't remember exactly how I went. I think I just went more to the yellow a little bit. Uh, but I just thought it, it stood out just a little bit better and made it a little bit easier for me to see, especially the writing. And I left the numbered panels because I knew that would be in the pattern. And I left, um, I took out a lot of the information because it's just so hard to read on the projector, but I left the very pertinent information. And I did put cut one in each one by the end because I was really cutting just the one of that particular piece. Also made sure I could see all of my notches and markings. Um, those were very helpful when making this. And so, yeah, there we go. That was how I got it ready to project. And then I exported it, of course. And then it was over here, ready to throw onto my projector and cut out. And like I said, that was a process. But the whole skirt was such a process, but so worth the results. Okay, so let's look at this skirt a little bit more. Here you can see just how vast it is. This is the back skirt and it is pockets and then one, two, three, four panels and then another pocket. And sewn to the inside, you can see my basting stitches I didn't completely get rid of. Uh, sewn to the inside is the inner waistband. Now when I sewed the skirt together, I just used my regular straight stitch. I went ahead and surged. I went ahead and surged the edges just to keep everything nice and neat and tidy. And then you sew the pockets on and you finish the edge with a surged edge because it's gonna not really be seen. Um, the pockets are different to make than you are used to if you have only done modern pockets, but they're very 18th century inspired pockets and it was pretty straightforward once I read the directions and figured out what I was doing. Again, I just searched for some extra security. You were supposed to put this right sides together so this would be on the inside, but that seemed like unnecessary bulk to me when I could surge it um, to keep my edges clean. So that's the choice that I made. This, of course, is linen, so it is very wrinkly, but that's okay. So onto the back, you add the inner waistband. I have both pieces of this interfaced. Uh, that wasn't necessarily on purpose. That was just a uh, mistake that I made. I understood that I was supposed to interface both of them, and it was really only supposed to be one. Uh, but I think it worked out because it keeps it nice and stiff. So these are two interfaced pieces put together and then the waistband is one piece folded over and it is also interfaced um, almost to the edges and you put the you put the lacing loops uh, on your inner waistband on both sides I went ahead and very roughly hand stitched my cording to this lacing loop that way I wouldn't lose it. Um, it's just made it a little bit easier when I put the skirt on to have it kind of at the ready. And I also added this snap here and here so that when I put the skirt on, I can snap that and it will kind of hold the skirt on my hips at least while I do the lacing. Uh, and like I mentioned, I like to lace from the top down so that the bow is more at the bottom. So if you remember from me showing you earlier, I don't, I don't have this kind of gap with my lacing. So what I do is I get it all ready to go and then I unsnap this and start sliding this under as I tighten my um, cord. And I just try to make sure that, I'm not sure how well you can see this, that the lacing panel stays tucked below the waistband 
where it's sewn on the other side as I scoot it over. Hopefully that made sense. So it is a split skirt. The front skirt you make completely differently and add it together towards the end. You can see right here that it is, let's measure that. There is only about 10 inches of connected skirt here. And uh, you do a bar tack here. Mine did it up a little bit long, but it's fine. So you sew the four front skirt panels together. You finish the edge like so, because this is the edge that will be showing. And whenever you put them together, um, you use the bar tack to make sure that, you know, things don't tear there. And whenever you put it all up together, you know, if there's any gapping, what's gonna show is your pocket, not your skin. So it's able to keep you modest even if there's a gapping there and you stick your hand through there and get to the pocket. I do think that my pockets end up a little bit too far forward. I think if they were a little bit further back, um, it would allow my hand to get into the pocket a tiny bit easier or maybe just shifting this this way would help a little bit. It's not bad. Uh, you'll see the video of me putting all the things in my pocket. It's just um, not perfectly ideal for what I would like it to be. But like I said earlier, I think maybe making this back waistband a tad bit smaller would give me more of a gap between my panels, would position everything where my side seams were closer to my actual side and it would look nicer. And then I would probably have to make the front waistband a little bit longer just to make up for that. I think I would keep the skirts the same size because they do um, gather so much that you wouldn't make a huge difference. I also think I might pleat next time. There ended up being quite a few pleats in my gathers um, and I just really think it would be a cleaner finish. And then as I said before, there is over seven yards of skirt to him when you get to the hemming stage and mine did not end up super pretty but it did work and that is all that matters the bulk of this skirt hides a lot of mistakes <laughs> i think it was just such a fun sew and it was a little bit challenging a little bit of a foray into history bounding without really having to go super historical as much as i am talking about how long it took and how much effort it was i'm really glad that i put all of that into this skirt because it is such a nice result and so worth it this video was a little bit different than i normally do on this channel i've never done a pattern review before i really really love this skirt though and i really wanted to share it with you and share with you some of the ways that i made it a little bit more projector friendly even though it already had a projector file and i could have just cut with that i also just needed to show off this thing that I had spent so much time working on. So thank you for indulging me in that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things that help this channel out. And tune in next month for something that is a little more specific to projector sewing. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching my videos. Like, subscribe, and comment.